Hey everyone, I'm Erwin Marine. Welcome back to the channel, my next Escape from Tarkov video. We're going to get back into the hideout guides, the crafting guides, if you will. It's been a long time since I've done one. The hideout has been crazy, things have been changing, and it seems like every time I would go to put one of these together, BSG would change something, so it would be out of date, and I don't ever want to give you guys bad advice or advice that makes you lose money. So, things have settled a bit, we can dive into some detail now, and I can actually do one of these guides. So, let's not waste any more time and get right into it. Now, the way these guides are set up, if you're new, is I, I, I do these to help you maximize your profits out of your hideout. Um, and to do this, there's one rule, and really only one rule that applies, and that's don't stack crafts. So what that means is in, a, in, in your workbench, for example, don't make red gunpowder and then use that to craft bullets of any kind or use the red gunpowder to craft anything for that matter or green gunpowder or any of the items don't stack crafts because at the end of the day while the actual overall profit is more like how much you make is more because of the amount of time you spend doing both of those crafts your profit per hour actually decreases you're better off just crafting one item the best item and selling that if you want to make bullets because you use them that's fine you're not looking to craft to make money that's that's what i'm doing here this guide is about making the most money Money per hour as you can in your hideout prices that I use here are pretty much averages but I do apply some trends I try to look at the way things are going or way they're headed so if something that looks like it's headed down and it's not gonna be worthwhile while today or tomorrow it might be the best craft later on in the week it might not be so I'll not list that as the best craft but that doesn't happen a whole lot now you're gonna be able to beat my numbers on these because I'm using average prices for the components so if you're buying components way cheaper than what I'm showing and selling your the, the product for way higher than I'm listing, then of course you're going to do better. But that applies to all of the crafts. So uh, just keep that in mind when you're picking through this. I also take into account flea market fees. Um, assuming you don't have a level three Intel uh, for the fee purposes, and I don't take into account skill levels. Those apply evenly, and there is a few circumstances where that will swing one craft over another, but it's pretty rare. I do have a spreadsheet that you can check out to and make changes yourself. I update it when I do these videos, but it doesn't take very long for it to get out of date. So you can go onto Google, you can copy the, the, the file. Uh, don't request access because I just ignore those. Just copy the file. Um, and then you can make changes how you see fit. I do have a video that kind of shows how the spreadsheet works. Feel free to check that out. It's a short little quick explanation. And the link will be in the description and the comments for you to go find it. So with all that out of the way, let's go jump in. And the first thing we'll go look at is the med station. So over here at the med station, your number one craft right now is pile of meds. And that's pretty much the way it is for most of the wipe. There's a few times where items in the uh, med station get to be worth more than pile of meds, but it's almost always this. Now, the key is to get your augmented for less than 30k, uh, or get them for found and raid. Now, you can get them more expensive than that and still make money. It just kind of digs into the profits a little bit. And, and one thing you should remember, you should never be selling your augmented. I mean, it's great that people are because it makes it cheaper for you, but the flea market fee is actually higher on the augmented than it is on the pile of meds itself. So you're saving that little bit of money uh, and it doesn't sound like much, but when you craft hundreds and hundreds of these things, it really adds up over months of playing the game. So don't ever sell your augmented and craft it in a pile of meds and sell a pile of meds. And when it comes to selling them, I try to sell them for about 17.5 or 17K, but that's getting tougher and tougher uh, as we've been going on on the wipe here. For whatever reason, pile of meds and augmented have been getting cheaper. So just try to push that as far as you can, you know, 16K, 15K if you need to, uh, the higher the better, obviously. Another thing on top of this, uh, if you're crafting moonshine, you can barter sugars for six of these. And if you're making them for, you know, let's say you're making them for 12 or 13K a piece, you know, you're getting your sugar for all of about 75, 80K, which is way cheaper. And it actually allows you to make moonshine and make money off of it. So just something to keep in mind with the pile of meds. SJ6s right now, and I don't know if this is going to last for very long, can almost be as profitable pile of meds, especially if you shop right. Uh, the SJ1 barter from Therapist is a great way to do this. If you're getting your NACLs for under 15K um, and then aim for a sell price of the SJ6s at 50 to 55K, you're going to do pretty good. Just keep in mind, though, because the SJ6s have been trending down. I don't know if they're going to keep going that way, but they might. If they get much below, you know, 45, 50K, they're probably not going to be worth making anymore. If you only have a level one med station, uh, you can make money with Salewas, but you have to use hemostats you find in raid, or better yet, ones that you've partially used. So like uh, one use or two uses, and you don't wanna use those up, 
you can turn those into Salewas and recover some of your money, but that's not ideal. You should probably focus on getting your med station to level two if you're not level one, just so you can craft those pile of meds and actually make a little bit of money at it. Now, on a side note here, something you can also do that I do that it doesn't necessarily make you money, but it saves you money, let's put it that way. Golden stars are really expensive, right? Well, it doesn't matter if it's a 10 use or a one use, you can use that to make propitols. So what I do is I use up my golden stars until I have one or two uses left. I take them out of my container and then I craft propitols with them. I either sell or use those propitols, but using that one use or two use golden star saves you money in the long run versus just using it up. Like one of my favorite things to do is I kill somebody and they found something good and put it in their container and they pulled out a one or a two use golden star. That's great to me. That thing's worth 60, 70 K just because of what I can sell seven propitols at. So that's, I mean, you can see that's what I'm doing right here. I just had a one out of 10 use that I'm crafting and I'll have another one here before too much longer. And just another little tip to help you make a little bit more money out of your hideout. Okay, so moving over to the nutrition unit. And this is gonna be a quick talk because there's not much here. You can't really make any money in the nutrition unit right now. Uh, there's nothing that's scratching it out. Now, if you get out of raid with like a chocolate that's not found in raid, you can use it to make whiskeys and do okay. Uh, same thing with some of this other stuff. But for the most part, you're not gonna do it. If you really wanna scratch a living out of this or you're trying to craft to level up your hideout skill, you can make Wilston cigarettes um, and pretty much break even. Sometimes you make a little bit of money. Most of the time you just break even though. But that's pretty much all there is to talk about at the nutrition unit. On the other side here, the water collector and booze generator. So the water collector should always be running. I know it's gotten cheap and I know it looks kind of scary, but the higher your level you are, the more money you make, the higher hideout management skill you have, the more money you make because it actually uses less of the filter. And uh, it, it, it because it only uses initially 65%, you know, right now I'm only, I'm down below 50% on what I use for a filter to craft. So if I buy a filter for 120K, that means it only actually costs me 60K to make the purified water. So if you have your water collector, always keep this running. Just buy a filter, throw it in there, sell it when you get the water. You don't have to craft anything and you're going to make a little bit of profit. It'll at least help cover the cost of your fuel and things like that. Over at the booze generator, though, there's a couple of tricks here. And we talked about them a little bit already. You know, I use crafted uh, purified water. I don't buy it i don't try to do anything crazy like that but for sugars i never buy my sugars i'm either using chocolates that i don't have found in raid uh because you know i put in my container and i died or i'm bartering with therapist and jaeger so it's five Emil um, amelia rye croutons with jaeger which you can buy four of those from therapist and then you know i usually keep them if i find them in raid uh, in fact, I always keep them if I find them in raid, but I don't buy them off the flea market, but it's expensive. And then I use my crafted pile of meds with therapist barter for sugar. And when I have it, I just craft it. And then I sell this and you make, you don't make great money, but it is a good way to boost your flea market rating. It's just something else that can run in here that generates a little bit of more passive money for you. But that's pretty much it. If you're buying sugar, if you're doing things like that, you're not going to make money with moonshine. Now, Actually, before we go look at anything else, I want to take a quick second. I don't do this very often. I should probably do it more, but I want to thank the Patreons um, that support the channel. The support from these folks has helped make this channel uh, what it is and help, helps me grow the channel even more. It's helped me pay for editors, get better equipment. Every bit of support from these folks goes right back into the channel and they're helping fund uh, some pretty exciting things we've got coming. I don't really want to talk about it yet. I kind of keep it under wrap, but we've got uh, we've got some pretty cool things we're thinking about for Tarkov here that they're going to help help us get off the ground. So once again, thank you to all these folks. Uh, I really, really appreciate your guys' support. It means the world to me. But now that that's, uh, that thank you is out of the way, let's get back to what everybody really wants to know about. I uh, almost walked right past it. The Intel Center here is gotten a little bit simpler. With the changes to graphics cards, they're not worth craft anymore. So you really got three crafts here in the Intel Center that make you money. It's VPXs, Intelligence, and Flash Drives in that order. So if you're getting things non, like if you're getting things out of RAID that aren't found in RAID, things like SSDs and G phones and GPXs, uh, it's great for making flash drives and VPXs themselves. RAM is super cheap now, so I'm not worrying about that, but it's mostly these SSDs, uh, G phones, and things like that. And then the flash drives, if you're getting those, especially if you're getting those uh, not found in RAID, you know, you're putting them in your container and you die or whatever, or like me, you forget to take them out and you see them insured and you're like, shit, I insured them. Anyways, those are great for making Intel and then just sell those things uh, as you make them and you do okay. Time on them is a long time. You don't make all that much profit per hour, but you know, each day when they're done or each day and a half or two days, you know, it's another 50, 60, 100K, depending on what you're crafting. As you can see here, I'm doing VPXs and Intel. So that's pretty much all that there is for the Intel Center. Over at the laboratory, uh, again, we're pretty simple here. There's not a lot to talk about. There's two crafts you should be focusing on. Number one is a quarter of craft. 
and I list this as the best craft. It's not always the absolute best profitable, but it's simple. There's no risk to it, and you can do it at level one. So this is all around, this is a great craft for people. It makes you about 15, 20K an hour, and you don't even need your generator turned on. You know, so if you're really low level, you can make, you can buy these things from Ragman, turn them into Cordura, it just got done right there, and you're gonna make yourself a little bit extra money, helps fund your raids. I'm doing that on my alternate account right now, or I'm doing an alpha to capper run, this is what I'm crafting. Uh, and it actually helps quite a bit when you're you're scrounging for money and you have a tiny stash like that. These, these, these help out quite a bit. Uh, but if you into trying to play the market a little bit, bleach can be your way to go. You have to be frugal with buying your components and you have to be sell patient in selling your bleach in big stacks. I shoot for a total component price of about 34K. Sometimes I can get that down to 30K, but 34K is it. You get your soap for about 13, 13 and a half. Sodiums, you know, somebody gave me a hard time for this. I know it's not sodium, sodium salt, it's sodium bicarbonate, but it, the first word sodium. So I just say sodium because it's easier to easier to say. So sodiums uh, for about 12K and then the alkalis for eight, eight and a half K. If you can get them for less, awesome. Once you're crafted, you know, I try to get these things till I have 15, 20 of them so they can sit for a while, uh, especially over the weekend when they get cheap. But I try to sell them for anywhere from 10 to 12K. Sometimes you can push 13, 14K, just kind of depends on what's going on that week. Um, and, and here you can see the chart doesn't really show it because there's a couple of jack wagons. They like to list hundreds of these things. And there's one guy that has them listed for 10K. So it's got the chart pegged at 10K other than when he resets. So trust me, they will hit uh, 10 to 12K every other day, um, especially during the week. The weekends, they come back down. But I've had a lot of luck selling these things on Thursdays and Fridays. And that's kind of what I aim for. And then saving the best for last, like always, we have the workbench. Now, this is where the rule don't stack crafts comes into the biggest play. And you can do it at the med bench as well, but this is where most of your crafts you can be stacked because there's lots of gunpowder crafts, things like that that you can use inside, you know, wires, all that stuff. Just don't do it. Craft and sell your items. Don't stack. That's all I can say. And unless you've got other goals than making the most money. Hands down, the best way to make money is craft a single item. So now that I'm done beating that dead horse, red gunpowders are the way to go. These are your number one craft by far. They're about 50% better than any other craft out there, so it's not even close. Even if you're not getting your components at your perfect prices, this is what you should be crafting if you're trying to make money. And the biggest reason for this is because of how fast it crafts. Because this thing is, for me, let's go look here. For me, the craft is pretty quick because I've got max hideout and everything like that. You know, it's 22 minutes. So even small savings in your cost really amplifies into the profit per hour because of that craft time. So since it's 22 minutes, if I save a thousand rubles on a, a price, that's almost 3000 rubles per hour. Now it can be hard to keep up with this. You know, you have to do this every, between every raid just about with, depends on when you die and stuff. But if you keep your components stocked and you just blow these things in, you will make a bunch of money selling these. And, and the goal is to get your, uh, your green, your Eagle gun powders for about 65 K or less. Uh, your kites for about 20K and matches for about 20K. And obviously, like I said, any more you can save from that, you're doing great. But even if you go above that, even if you're you're pushing those prices a thousand or 2000 above that, you're still better than any other craft here. I try to sell the Hawks for about 73K, but that's really pushing the top of the market. Sometimes you're only gonna get 70, 71K, which is fine. As long as these things are staying above pretty much 66K, you're going to beat out any other craft here. The other beauty of this craft is that it's available at level one. So there's not really a lot else to talk about. But if you're looking for alternates, uh, circuit boards using the DVD craft, and then VOG 25s are also decent, decent crafts behind the uh, the Hawk gunpowder craft. But that pretty much wraps up all of the crafts um, that we want to talk about. Uh, the, the last little bit I'll leave you with is you don't have to do what I say in here. The best thing, honestly, to do is pick a craft you like doing, whether it's based on the maps you loot or the resources you understand because if you understand what the market's doing for a particular craft that's where you're going to make the most money at so don't try to chase around 10 different crafts focus on one get the components dialed in to where you know where they're cheap and when they're expensive and the same thing with the uh the product know where it's cheap and where it's expensive because then you can sell it high and honestly if you want you can even manipulate the market a little bit so like with red gunpowder's example me crafting two items i usually craft red gunpowders and uh, M61s. Now I don't use my crafted my crafted reds to make M61s, but what I'll do is I'll sell my crafted reds high, and then I'll aim to buy the, the the reds for the M61, you know, two, three, four, sometimes six k cheaper than what I'm listing for, and it takes off those lower end red uh, those lower end hot gunpowders out of the market because I use them. 
So it keeps that price a little bit higher. So that's just one last little tip I wanted to share with you guys to kind of help you maximize your profits in the hideout. Well, that wraps up the video. I appreciate you watching. Make sure you hit that like button because it helps out the channel a bunch and subscribe for future content. We also have a Discord, links down in the description that you can come join. We're filling up with a bunch of chill people who just love to play Tarkov. If you're looking to support the channel in other ways, we've launched a Patreon with some benefits like access to a Discord channel, a constantly updated spreadsheet for my hideout calculations, and some other things if you want to go check it out over there. Lastly, thanks for your support on YouTube. It means the world to me and I greatly appreciate every one of you. So with that, we'll wrap it up and we'll see you in Tarkov.